Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another episode of Baruin Build. Today we are back here and as you can see, still working out the details on all of these different uh, uh, sawmills and that's okay, been doing this, I swear I just did this, but I guess not, that's okay. Um, so I actually finally got Optifine installed, got all the clouds back up to normal height. Um, and last episode, we built this guy right here, which is a hot air balloon delivery system that can be used throughout the city uh, to transport logs. And so we made this last episode. I think it looks very good. Thank you for all the compliments on the balloon and stuff itself. It is definitely a cool build, very fun. Um, and it's not that hard, actually. It doesn't take too many resources or too much thought processing. Um, so I'm happy with it. I think it's very good. Today, uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, resource gathering. It's going to be the main thing, uh, mainly because not for the stuff that's behind me or uh, what's right there. Um, it's because I have an idea that I want to start getting into. So I know I had put out a, a slight poll on figuring out what you guys would like me to do um, after we finish this area off and seeing that this area is almost getting to the point where it's finished off in the sense where the upper portion is done um, and then we'll just be figuring out the groundwork which is just that pattern over there i figured let's start thinking for the nether update and so i've got an idea that i'd, I'd like to kind of maybe talk you through ever so slightly. I don't want to give too much away and I don't want to give the build away, but we need to do some planning and resource gathering before we can even consider starting in on this. And this is going to require two different things. Uh, I'm going to try, I may do some sort of like first person time lapse type of thing where we're gathering up just some materials. Um, and the, and doing just a really quick Q&A. There's been a few questions that I thought could be interesting to answer. Um, and then also doing sort of a, a let's walk through 116 in this world and see where the best location for this project is going to be. So why don't we jump into the 116 stuff and then we'll hop into after that, start doing a little bit of resource gathering. Okay, so we're here in our testing world for the snapshots. As you can see, it is a little behind our current world. I didn't feel like making a copy since we already had this one. Just went ahead and updated this one to the newest snapshot. Um, and made that quickly made this because we need another portal anyways. Um, so some new blocks that have come out. So Crying Obsidian looks pretty cool. It's an old block from, oh gosh, I don't even know when. It used to be an old block you could get. Um, then they removed it. Actually, I don't think you could ever get it. It was just like teased or like kept in the codes, code files, but or, yeah, whatever. Could be, you could get it like through commands, I think, but that was it. Um, and then they added this. This is the new nether what is it anchor or something or other nether anchor respawn anchor so as it as you can tell it is it, by the name it is for respawning in the nether and you first start off with this you fill it up with glowstone and it gets basically four charges um, and so you can have four charges if you die four times in the nether then you have to refill it up in order to respawn in the nether very cool um, do not use it in the overworld it blows up but i thought it was a it could make for a cool little design i really do enjoy what this looks like i think it, it looks really cool and with the new blocks you can really make some cool uh, design nether portals now it makes a more magical feeling these are the new weeping vines that you can climb upwards which is really cool um, but today what we're doing the reason we're in this snapshot is because i need to find the perfect location for our next build my goal is to go off in that direction which is the eastern direction so south east so more the southeast direction would be great or well just east um could be a really good thing because we need to make a portal so let's go ahead and go on in 
here and let's see which way are we facing now west east okay so we need to go this way and so this is what our nether looks like uh, or will look like i'm planning on just outright deleting our nether because we don't have any builds or anything here currently uh, we don't need to really keep anything we just have some different portals and tunnels that we can remake not that big of a deal and i don't know why but my game just closed out so that's why you saw the title screen um, so we need to go this way a little bit and let's see what's over here okay so this actually could be perfect um so the idea is what we need is we need i, I would prefer to find a soul sand valley uh, so let me go ahead and find it and then I'll explain to you why. Okay, so that was actually very easy. So Soul Sand Valley is just this way. Um, and it is, I mean, you can see we were literally like right there and this is the Soul Sand Valley. Oh, wow. So they made, did they make the Soul Soil spawn less? Doesn't look like it. Ooh, here's what the, uh, this, our texture looks like. I like it. I like what this looks like. I think maybe a little tweaking here and there, but I think overall this looks great. Um, so we could have a really cool interaction with the nether fortress here. That's so cool. So much basalt. Yes, this is it. This is where we need it. So the idea is, the reason why we're doing this is because of, do you remember that build I, I showed you? The uh, withering, uh, not withering isles, um, the shadow isles concept that i made well that's what we're going to be doing in 116 and i want to bring the steampunk city into the nether as well to help explain what's going on so we needed to find this perfect location so what i'm thinking is maybe we make it so that they the the steampunk city maybe comes out pops out a portal right around like in this area makes it it makes a portal here um let's see let's see where how far away this is from our city and for any of you who don't know you can light this obsidian of course cannot light the crying obsidian does not make a portal so where is this Okay, so I have found a good location. So I want it, the reason I want it over here is because this is going to be more where I think kind of like some harbor stuff is going to be. This is the area where the harbor district sector of the industrial di district is going to be. And so I wanted to make it over this way. Now, actually, let's go into spectator mode because this can take a while. So this is going roughly maybe a thousand blocks away uh, i found this snowy biome and as you can see set up a portal right here in kind of this central portion and i thought this could be a cool area to set up some some sort of like snowy village um that was a a it was a flying snowy village um or was kind of set up on maybe these icebergs made that made homes on these icebergs smaller uh, homes only issue is this desert area right here can be seen it's a little bit not great so i may look around just briefly to try and find some place that is a little better um, but i like the idea of having this as a snowy biome build i thought it could be kind of a cool thing so we have a max size portal right here and this is i will tell you roughly oh probably um five times smaller than what we're actually going to be making uh the build is gargantuan i don't really know the logistics of it beyond what it's going to look like i don't know how it's going to be held up i don't know a lot of stuff currently but i want to start figuring out the location of it so this portal takes us right to here which is right not as far as i'd like um so we may just make it over the ocean and make it so it extends over this lava area here because originally i was thinking the portal original portals were right there originally i was thinking over there but maybe right here would be good because the soul sand valley starts very very quickly and then we can get right into the building of the bastion area or i get i don't know if it's going to be a bastion or what but the area that is going to be 
our next build in the nether and this extends quite far so we do have a good amount of playing so i may also search around for an area to start up in this area of course this is terrifyingly dangerous with all these gas it is a uh, pretty creepy so i may try and find a spot that's kind of hidden and we can maybe make sort of like a fort of some sort but this is quite a big biome as well which is really really good for our our needs so very excited about that but that is what we're going to be doing uh, let me go find the portals again um, that is why we're currently searching for well that's a cool bone structure all these bone structures are cool um, but that is why we are searching currently is because i want to have a good location for our nether build and i think this is going to be very very nice maybe even building in this area could be good i don't know i don't know i'll give it some thought i'll keep thinking on it um, and then we'll see. Now, where did that portal go? I think it's over here. All right, so I've had a change of uh, heart. Um, originally, we were planning on doing it over in that direction, I believe, in that icy area. And I, th I think the idea is very cool, but the location ended up not being like wonderful. And uh, the more and more I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't think it's going to work. So this is an area just a little bit further out um and so we've got this nice plains biome that we are in right now and it's pretty small and it's uh okay i think and i think it will work for making just like a small town uh, builds would be much smaller um, it would be one of those like off area towns and we could do more of a ruined sort of feel um, the reason why we're going further away from the steampunk city is because this is something that was like an experiment and they don't want it near the city unless in case something goes wrong. So this is going to be kind of like a uh, big cargo area type of city um, and it's going to be under attack from the nether um, from I don't know who exactly in the nether but uh, it's going to be under attack from the nether and where this will take you out is there's this actually this little island at the bottom here and we need a lot of height and I thought it'd be kind of cool to make sort of like as if they created this lava city that is under that and then they made like some sort of bridge over here and that's how the uh, whoever we wherever we're building uh, in here this is how how they would actually get to, to this area is they make like some sort of lava bridge over here um, and then it connects up and they can get to their nether area. Um, I thought that was going to be interesting um, and I, I like this area for some building as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly where, but I think this is kind of a, a cool starting area. Um, plus gives us a lot of verticality, which we will need and you will see that later on but I think this is a good area. Let me know your thoughts down below about if you think this is a good area. I know you don't have much in the ways of ideas as to what we're talking about next episode. I'm hoping to go over it a little bit more, um, but now let's get into some resource gathering. Okay, so for this little bit of time lapse, uh, we need a lot of obsidian for this build we're going to be getting into. And so uh, we are here in the end. It looks a little different. I haven't seen the end with our end texture, like our uh, end stone texture. I think it looks all right. It's pretty alien looking, but I think it looks pretty okay. Um, I wanted to answer a few questions that we have had. Um, I did a post on the community page just a, uh, maybe like a week ago or so, um, maybe two, I'm not sure. Um, just asking because we were going to have this time lapse that I knew I needed to do some stuff. Uh, so going to answer a few questions that you guys have asked me and there's a few uh, firstly that deal with the texture pack so let's get into those real quick. The first question is from Tyler Vokes and he is asking when do you think the texture pack will be finished? Well Tyler it is in the final stages of for the I guess pre-release on Patreon. Um, I'm just getting some final tweaks out and then it should be this. I know I've been slacking a little bit on it. Um, just trying to see family and stuff during this Corona coronavirus stuff, uh, trying to stay away from, uh, getting together with like, uh, I don't know, friends and big groups, but trying to keep up with family and all that. 
Um, so been doing that uh, this past week, but I am working today, actually, the day that I'm editing this, um, to try and get it out this coming week. Um, and so hopefully by the end of this week, it will be up. You'll see a post on Patreon. Um, and I may make a community post or something about it to tell you all that the texture pack has released. On the same note of the texture pack, Holly Young asked, how did you learn to create a texture pack? And uh, well, Holly, it's been a bit of a journey. I don't know that much about the JSON file coding aspect. I, I kind of have just looked at what other people have done, uh, particularly like Beta Below and Jermsey Boy. I use their packs as good references because they seem to know a lot more. Jeremy Boy in specific knows a good amount, I think, about the JSON files themselves. Um, and so I tend to all download his latest pack and look at the files and how he codes things um, for the actual texture. So coding wise, um, that is kind of where I've learned how to create the texture pack side of things. Uh, in terms of the design stuff, uh, I am just, I'm a graphic designer by trade. And so that's my day job. And uh, so it kind of, I think, comes naturally to me to be able to just create textures. Uh, it is a little challenging to work with a 16 by 16 pixel grid, but it's also, it's kind of fun. Uh, you have to kind of use your imagination as to what a texture may look like in that low of resolution. Um, and so I've just, it's just been kind of trial and error, uh, and I, I've kind of just gone with it as I've grown. And of course, I've been doing it for now like two years, so it's definitely, I've learned a lot. Um, and so it just takes time and practice. Moving away from the texture pack oriented questions, Drawing Master 1, actually no, Drawing Master asks, where do you get your inspiration? And I would say, um, most of my inspiration either comes from concept art or previous games that I've played. Um, I try and stay away from looking too much at other Minecraft builds. I know that can be a good source of inspiration, but when I'm building it's everything up, I try to stay away from that so I don't directly copy um, because I want to be original. Um, the concept art side of things, it is a little hard to figure out what it would look like in Minecraft. You have to make some sacrifices because concept art can be as flowy as you want because you have perfect curves and stuff. In Minecraft, you have to kind of figure it out a little bit. Um, may have to go make the scale a little different or, or you know, sacrifice some various materials we just don't have. Um, but that's a good source of getting inspired for different build styles, I think. Uh, it's a good challenge as well to grow as a builder is if you you do some concept art, it's like take a concept art piece and try and make a Minecraft build out of it. I think it's a good way of going about learning how to build. Um, and then previous games, I mean, as many of you who have been around for a while know, much of my world is inspired by like Fable 2. That's probably the game that I draw the most inspiration from because it is by far my favorite game. Um, and so, I mean, we've got a gypsy camp that's pretty much dedicated to the Fable 2 gypsy camp. We've got a, or we've got a Orchard Vale, which is like a mixture of Oak Field and Oak Vale from both Fable 1 and Fable 2. Um, and it's supposed to be kind of like the Fable 2 version of Oak Vale that's all like swampy and sunken down. And it's like they're, all the people there are gone because they've been sacrificed and all that. I don't know, it gets a little dark, but I draw a ton of inspiration from that game in particular, um, but other games as well. Like it's good to set Minecraft aside for a little bit, play some extra games. I mean, this next concept we're getting into um, with the Shadow Isles concept is from League of Legends. And that is a completely different style of game, but they build out their lore so well and they build kind of like a, a good inspiration uh, in terms of their like cinematics and stuff that you can get a lot of inspiring stuff, especially like it ties so well with the blue fire and stuff um, that the Nether update is introducing. So I get my inspiration from a lot of different places, but I try and I try and like make it not Minecraft oriented. I think that's the best way to get inspiration to then challenge yourself uh, to grow as a builder and figure out how can I bring that into Minecraft in my own way. Brandon, no last name, asks, how did you get your name? And 
it has been asked before, but no problem, Brandon. I know many of you have actually never heard the story behind my name. Not really much of a story. I am, as I said, I am a graphic designer by trade. So that's kind of where Pixel uh, came in because a lot of times artists are called pixel pushers. Digital artists are called pixel, pixel pushers. Um, and I love coffee. And so I decided pixel and brew because brew can be another term for coffee or tea, I suppose. Um, and so I, I don't know, I just kind of combined them and then I made this little logo thing of the hand holding the pickaxe coming out of the coffee cup. And for some reason that stuck and I liked it and it was different. Um, and it, I, I didn't want a name that was just like similar to my own name. Um, I wanted to kind of make a separate identity. So that's kind of where it came from is just kind of my background and my interests. Dryan086 asks, what's your favorite build? And uh, I'm going to take this in the perspective of like my own world because there's way too many builds to judge what my favorite build in, is of all time. I think it's kind of twofold as to what my favorite build is. And um, in terms of completed builds, I think my favorite would be the cathedral um, in or the temple, I guess, in Sarthal. Uh, I think that is just still one of my favorites. It just looks cool. I think it's a it's well designed. It's got an interior and no matter how like not totally finished it is, it's pretty much done. Um, and I just think it's probably the coolest of builds that's in our world right now. Um, but the steampunk city is probably my favorite in terms of just overall projects that we're working on and seeing the end goal and knowing how far away we are, I think is, is probably one of my favorite things about it because I know it's going to be something that we're working on for honestly years because it's going to take forever to build. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, in terms of finished builds, the temple in Sarthal in terms of current projects or unfinished builds, it would be the steampunk city. And finally, Tyler S asks, what's one feature you think should be added to vanilla Minecraft? And this one's a little difficult because there's a lot of things that I wish was added to vanilla Minecraft. Some things that are just because I think they'd be cool and some things that are probably a little bit more modded feeling that may not fit into the vanilla scope of things. The thing that I'm thinking of that is probably not totally vanilla feeling is being able to modify your armor and for armors to actually like there to be benefit of wearing like a full set of leather armor or something, something more in depth with our armor system, because right now it's really dull and boring. Nobody ever wears leather because you probably find iron more than you find leather and leather just isn't that great. You can dye it, but it's not like worth honestly i feel like it's just a waste of leather to make leather armor and so there's just like there's no no point in a lot of the different armor levels um and so i think that fix it um actually did a great video on ideas for upgrading armor um or or like changing how the armor system works and i'll try if i remember i'll try and put a link in the description for that um, I think I agree with a lot of what he says. I think there's a lot of cool stuff that could be done to armor to make it actually like worth wearing, if that makes sense. Like they're introducing some concepts to make gold worth wearing, but I wish there was some more depth into just like everyday wearing, not just like, oh, you wear gold in the nether because of piglins won't attack you. I wish it was like, that aspect of things great but also gold gives you i don't know a little bit of increased movement speed or maybe make that leather or something i don't know and i think that's going to do it for all of the various different questions um sorry if the footage wasn't particularly interesting i wanted to answer them though um, i wanted to get your questions answered just because i knew i'd asked you and i didn't want to just kind of like not follow through with answering them plus this episode's a little bit of a lead up to the to this next one we're we're going to be taking some big steps to creating this next creation and it's it's just yeah, we needed to have kind of a stepping stone to get there. So sorry if it's a little bit boring, but we got just a little bit left and then the episode will wrap up. So let's jump back on in to the real world. Okay, so I know that we just did 
a whole entire section of finding the perfect location for our nether portal um, for the steampunk city. Uh, but I think I found the perfect location. Uh, this is actually in our survival world. So um, and I, I think it's going to be a perfect location um, and also random. But I hope you enjoyed the time lapse little bit of answering questions. I just wanted to do a little bit while I had to gather up a lot of obsidian. We need roughly 700 obsidian for this portal. And so I decided might as well mine it from the end because that is a good location for some obsidian. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought it was good. I kid you not, I have found the perfect location and it's truly amazing for the build. Like you, you will see once we get into the build, you're going to see just how amazing it is. So we're actually roughly maybe a thousand blocks away, maybe two. I don't know. We're a little ways away from our steampunk city, which I think is good. I think this is going to be a good location. Um, and we can make a pretty interesting, like, uh, I don't know exactly, like I'm think imagining like a town that wraps around this bay area. We'll have maybe like a landing pad right here on this little island here. And then that island can also maybe have like a, uh, a tower that could have a little tower too. It's going to be cool. I think it's going to be a really cool area to build in and I'm really excited for it. But the reason why we're here is because we need to build a gargantuan nether portal. And what a better frame than this mountain. I mean, come on. Look at how beautiful this is. It's going, it's literally, it's taller than this. I've already measured it. Uh, it's significantly taller. But this is about as good as we are going to get. It's about the perfect width and it does, the design I have can be altered a little bit. It can be a little skinnier on the inside. Um, the portal itself can be. We'll just build, uh, the idea is for boats to be able to go into the nether, like flying ships to be able to go into the nether. And so that's why it has to be excessively tall. Um, and oh, it's just going to be awesome. I am so stoked for this. It's going to be super, super cool. Um, Steampunk City is that away, like I said, like a thousand or so blocks. But this is the area we are going to start building in honestly probably in like the next episode or so i'm going to be working in the steampunk city to get the lumber yard area done but i so want to start this project and i am so excited for it unfortunately i am out of time for today's episode i hope you have enjoyed and it's raining even the episode doesn't want to end oh it got very dark um, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have found some, at least some inspiration or ways to get inspiration. And I uh, hope uh, you enjoyed me answering questions and stuff. Tried to make it at least a little bit interesting uh, with not just a, a time lapse of me slapping obsidian. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get out of here before I get struck by lightning. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next episode.